Hello, Pastor Ma. First of all, I bring you greetings from your three kids. I bring you greetings from them, Michelle, Grace, and Gabriel. I just got a video trending online and I thought it fit to reply you. It is me you have issues with that I think you should face me. I don't know why you're fighting a man who uh, obviously has done you no wrong and has no hand in whatever uh, issues we both had. You have called on Nigerians over an issue that you already know the truth. I don't know why you're doing this. I don't know who paid you. I don't know what you want to achieve. But the only thing I'm going to say to you, haven't you done enough? Have you not destroyed this heart enough? Haven't you done the worst that any man could ever do? Have you not done, aren't you tired of the too many things you've done to me? Have you, aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of the things, the pain, the things that are too despicable that I can't even tell the word? Are you not tired? Are you not tired of, of plugging someone's daughter into pain? Aren't you tired? Are you not tired? You left me, you left me in Kano. You left me, you called me on a certain day and you told me that, yeah, you're going to leave the marriage. I thought you were bluffing. I called my people and they can testify. My mom is there, my brothers are there. My elder brother called you from UK. You told me you were leaving the marriage. I thought, he told me, my brother told me you were bluffing. I thought you were joking. Yes, I begged you. I remember I begged you. And then I got to the, the office, I collapsed, according to what my principal said, because I opened my eyes in the hospital. And that was where, because you had already threatened to take this kid from me, as heard in the, in the recording, that I will upload if Nigerians need to hear it. I knew, why are you doing this? Why? Haven't you destroyed me enough? I remember asking you in that record in that very day. I told you, I said, even if you borrowed my womb, you have done so much. You have done so much that when I begin to tell Nigerians what you have done to me, the hell you made me pass through in 10 years. Mike, I have hidden this because of the respect I had for you as the father of my kids. I never ever wanted to drag you online because internet don't forget issues and I have children that I value so much. I know how this is going to affect them. I never wanted it and so I allowed you to take my your way and allowed you to have your way whatever you wanted. If I begin to tell Nigerians the hell with evidences the you might passed me through for 10 years people are going to come out to do videos too because there are people who wear first hand witnesses to your maltreatment mike they have that recording to show and i'm going to upload it i'm going to upload those recordings i will call my brother now for those recordings you send them you told them that the, i was going to call in the gutters that i will eat from the dustbin in your own words, you said that to my people. And I told them not to do anything to you, that you are still the father of my kids. Oh, Jesus. And then I went, I picked the pieces of my life in depression. At some point, I had con contemplated suicide. And it was my little boy who God used to rescue me that very day. I had written my suicide note. I had written it down. I bought the sniper because I couldn't fathom why I will live life this much pain. Are you not tired? Mike, are you not tired? I won't drag you. I am only replying you. I won't drag you because of my children. But if you push me, I'm doing this reply right now to you, Mike, please. You have done so much. It's enough. It's enough. And you left. I picked the pieces of my life. I picked it. Even when you told my mom that it is not in your house, I will do international ministry. I preached the gospel even before, before I met you. I remember I couldn't face Apostle John the same. Apostle John Suleiman you are dragging right now. I couldn't face him. I could not. 
I was so scared. We had this whole thing planned out. And I told my brother that I was going to crawl in the gutter. I will not reply you mind. My people will reply you. Because they all know how you've treated us and how you've gone over these issues. You have you have recordings you sent to them. You had this thing all planned out. And like I said, this is the worst you can do. I will come out of this one, Mike. I am not I am not hypnotized. I am not under a spell. I know exactly what I'm doing. And listen to me, you had all this planned out. We got married in 2009. We were given two certificates. And I was told by the church to return one certificate to the local government. And the other certif wedding certificate was mine. You took the duplicate that I was to send to the local government. And you came back, Mike, to tell me that that certificate got missing. Because you said you wanted to do a visa. I kept quiet. A year later, Mike, you came back to me. If I'm lying, can't have this video. You came back to me and you told me that you need the original of a wedding certificate that you want to do a, vi a, a visa. I gave it to you. You came back again, Mike, and you told me that you have lost it. And you Mike, this is it. This is the worst you will ever do. I had to get into this car because I did not want my kids to hear nothing. I have always protected them. You have no conscience, Mike. You have no, you care about nobody. You have always been that way. You have no conscience. And listen, this is the worst. You told my brothers I would crawl in the gutters. And this, this is it. Walking out of me, taking your diary, that was the last truck. Oh God, how about I cried? I begged you, listen to me, this is the last you will do, and guess what, I will come out of this so scared, I was damn scared, I couldn't even approach Apostle John C. Suleiman, I could not even go to Omega Fire Ministries, it was people like Pastor Dan Okoje, people like Apostle Tenebe that took me and begged, and told Papa not to throw me away, and that I, I have a ministry. My life cannot end because of you, Mike. And then it took one year because before even Papa could hear me out, the same man you are accusing of what I don't know, the same man, it took him one year to even hear me. Papa was never aware that you left the house. This has nothing to do with Omega Fire Ministries and you know it. Mike, you know it. And then the next hit you, you drew, you drew the, 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 the last drew, draw that broke the camel's back. You went to my people and demanded your bride price. Mike, I remember I called you. And you told my people, you went to my house, you went to my mom. And you guys demanded your bride price. In your words, Mike, you said you're not ready to judge to anybody. My mom asked. That for two years, you never took care of your children. I am in the same Abuja with you. Mike, I am in the same Abuja with you. I am here with you. Instead, you will send bloggers to interrogate me. And the last apostle John Suleiman sent for you. You refused to show up. You refused to go. You did so much that I am not going to say, I'm not going to say, I still respect you as the father of my kids. Mike, don't push me to the wall. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Don't push me. I respect my kids. I do. And I'm going to watch what I say concerning you. But please, do not push me to the wall. Thank you. If you still have a little conscience in you, use it.